Isso. Good evening, everyone. Today, we have a neurology case presentation. We have with us Dr. Giriraja, sir, Professor of Internal Medicine from MBJ Medical College. Welcome to you, sir. Good evening. Welcome. Dr. Bhuvaneshwari, third year DNB Medicine postgraduate from HAL Hospital, Bangalore, has volunteered to present a neurological case. Welcome to you, ma'am. Good, good evening, sir. Welcome to all the participants. With the mentor's permission, we shall begin the session. Yeah, we we'll begin. Good evening, sir. And today I'm going to present a neurological case. Here comes a 34-year-old female who is a, she's resident from Bangalore, studied up to BA, DED. She's a teacher and she's a right-handed person. She presented with the chief complaint of swelling of both lower eyelids since three weeks, pain of both arms since two weeks, skin lesions since two weeks, pain of both legs since one week. Coming to issue of present illness, the patient was apparently normal three weeks ago. Initially, she noticed swelling of both lower eyelids, which initially started on left side. And the swelling is associated with redness. And she noticed while getting up in the early morning. And which is followed by lower eyelid swelling of the right eye. And uh, swelling associated with redness one day later. And the swelling is an sudden in onset, gradually progressive. And it is not associated with pain, blurring of vision, watering, double vision. And not associated with drooping of eyelids. And history of pain of both arms since two weeks. And the pain is dull aching and continuous type. And the pain of the left arm followed by right arm in two days. And the pain is associated with red swelling and weakness of the arms in the form of there is a history of difficulty in combing hair, history of difficulty in taking head bath, history of taking difficulty in doing overhead activities like shelf activities are troublesome for her. And there is no history of difficulty in mixing food, no history of diurnal variations, and no history of variation to exercise, no history of cold exacerbation to the weakness. And the history of skin lesions, which are hyperpigmented patches on the face, over cheeks, and later it is followed by hands on the dorsal aspect. And on the toes, one week later she noticed. And the skin lesions are sudden onset, gradually progressive, and it is increased and associated with itching. And the skin lesions are not associated with pain or photosensitivity. And coming to this history of pain of both lower limbs, initially in the thigh region for one week, and associated with weakness, which is sudden onset, gradually progressive, in the form of difficulty in getting up from sweating position, Difficulty in standing from chair without support. Difficulty in climbing up the stairs and coming down. And there is no history of difficulty in holding chappals. No history of difficulty in moving on bed side to side. No history of back pain or root pain. And no history of Raynaud phenomenon. And there is no history of sensory symptoms. No history of bowel and bladder involvement. No history of fever, joint pains, dry mouth, dry eyes, photosensitivity, no history of breathlessness or cough, no history of palpitations, excessive sweating or giddiness, no history of weight gain or weight loss, no history of loss of appetite, no history of headache. There is no history of loss of smell, no history of blurring of vision, no history of numbness over face, no history of difficulty in chewing, no history of drooling of saliva, deviation of angle of mouth. No history of hearing loss or ringing sensation in the ear. No history of nasal regurgitation or difficulty in swallowing. No history of hoarseness of voice or difficulty in moving head side to side. 
there is no history of hypo or hyperthyroid symptoms and no history of exertional muscle cramps coming yeah, to past enough, history enough, enough, enough. Yes. so to come back uh, with the history of presenting complaint go back to the slide history of presenting complaint yes sir yeah so this is a complaint yes, sir. Huh? swelling of both the lower eyelid since three weeks and pain of both the arm since two weeks in the present complaint you are not mentioned about the weakness of both the arms uh, along with the whatever pain she had no? both the arms since two weeks uh, uh, she had the weakness of the yes sir uh, limbs also was there along with the pain that you could have added in the present complaint uh, then skin lesion yes, since sir. two weeks and pain of both the along with the weakness of both the legs since one week present illness that time she told weakness of pain followed by weakness main uh, when you did the history when you allow it at that time only she told but she didn't complain yes, uh, uh, that there was a uh, weakness of both the upper limb and lower limb huh? okay yes sir yes sir right huh? so go back to the history of pertaining complaint the next slide yes sir okay so here uh, there is Uh, pain in both the upper limb and lower limb initially in the upper limb and then in the lower limb and then there is a weakness especially the proximal muscle weakness you are telling in the upper limb huh? she yes, couldn't do combing the hair and she couldn't lift the hand above the head huh? but the mixing and uh, of the food and buttoning and unbuttoning of the our cloth is normal so there is no distal muscle weakness huh? okay yes, it fairly started from days to weeks according to the history huh? Okay, yes, and fairly symmetrical. Both the upper arm fairly symmetrically it started. Huh? After yes, one sir. week of that, you are telling there is a pain along with the weakness of both the lower limbs. Okay, yes, that is also fairly symmetrical. That is also from days to weeks it started according to. Hmm? Yes, sir. And then in lower limb also there is a proximal muscle weakness. You couldn't get up from the sitting position, but the distal muscle uh, are fairly normal. You could hold the chappal. Huh? Uh, so distal muscle weakness is not there, and lower limb also it is fairly symmetrical. Huh? Yes. Next in the history, you are told there is no sensory symptoms. You could appreciate the cloth, hot and cold water sensation in the body. So sensory system is normal. Mm -hmm. huh? It is not affected. Yes. And bowel and bladder also you told yes. it is not affected. It is normal. Along with the one more important yes. thing in the history, what you are told is. There is a pain or symmetrical weakness of both the upper and lower limb. Okay, along with that, there is a swelling of both the lower eyelid with the skin lesions around the uh, knuckles on the upper limb and also knee and ankle joints on the lower limbs. Uh, and you are yes. telling they are intensely pruritic and they are not photosensitive. Uh, yes, so that is the your telling. She is thirty-four year old. Yes, so pain and weakness of both the upper limb and lower limb, and it is proximal muscle weakness. Initially started in the upper limb and then in the lower limb. Huh? Yes, sir. Uh, go back to your uh, negative history. What all you was the negative history? Yes, sir. Ah, no, no, the one side before. No, no, the one before, before. Ah, here you tell. Why you ask? No, no, one side before. Next slide. This one, sir. No, the diurnal variation. Yeah. The diurnal variation you had asked, no? That slide. Are you going? Are you yes, here? Sir. You asked history of no history of diurnal variation. The weakness. Why you asked diurnal variation, Bhuvaneshwari? To about neuromuscular junction disorders, sir. Yeah. So in a myasthenia gravis, uh, also can produce with a pure motor weakness. Huh? That to proximal muscle weakness, upper limb and lower limb. Okay, to mm -hmm. so, rule out neuromuscular junction disorder, you ask yes. the diurnal variation. Why you ask no history of uh, weakness with this variation with the XI? Why you ask that? In paramyotonia congenita, they uh -huh. have uh, mm -hmm. exacerbation with the cold. So, so to yeah. rule out the okay, paramyotonia congenita is the paradoxical with the XI, the weakness will be worse. Right? In paramyotonia congenita, and also with the with the cold exposure, the weakness will worsen in paramyotonia congenita. So thinking that you may be asking, 
any other reason history of exercise is relevant in this case both the upper upper limb and lower limb both are weakness no sensory no bone and bladder any other disease mm-hmm. will precipitate the weakness of both upper limb and lower limb not a weakness even and neuromuscular disorders also with excess fatigue will they will have okay neuromuscular tension disorder mm-hmm. also with excess the weakness will vary correct then and uh, maybe channelopathy muscle hypokalemic channelopathies hypokalemic periodic hello hello sir yeah hypokalemic periodic paralysis yeah periodic paralysis with the x rays uh, they can develop uh, okay the hypokalemia and they can develop the weakness uh, channelopathy uh, periodic paralysis uh, so this negative is here go to the next slide the negative is this slide what all the points you asked and why see related to skin lesions okay you asked okay then this is related to pain of arms and weakness uh, you asked is there back pain and root pain why you asked is there back pain and root pain to rule out spinal cord abnormalities sir yeah any compression no uh, producing the weakness in uh, both the upper limb and lower limb huh? okay mm-hmm. that is why you ask is there uh, uh, back pain and root pain any compression so okay that's okay and is there your is there reynolds phenomena why you ask is there reynolds phenomena because uh, some of the inflammatory myopathy that anti synthetase syndrome is they have association with reynot phenomenon sir so mm-hmm. to rule out that uh, i have asked this yeah, here anti synthetase uh, syndrome yeah, yeah here the patient is classic history of uh, uh, pain in both the upper limb and lower limb only motor and proximal the weakness that too with the skin lesion so you are considering as a inflammatory uh, myositis so one of the inflammatory myositis will have Uh, a Reynolds phenomena as the feature. There is a U.S. Reynolds phenomena, especially anti-synthetic antibody syndrome. Okay. Next okay. slide. Yeah. So there is no history of sensory symptoms, no history of bone and bladder involvement. Suppose if bone and bladder is involved along with a definite sensory level with the motor weakness, where you would have localized the anatomical localization here? Spinal cord, sir. Spinal cord. Huh? So, yes, to localize yes, the anatomical lesion, this is important. Any sensory level, sensory symptoms, uh, bone and bladder involvement. You have to ask. Here, there is no bone and bladder involvement, and there is no history of sensory symptom. The next is the why you yes, ask history of fever, joint pain, dry mouth, dry eyes, and photo sensitivity. Uh, one is uh, to rule out viral hmm. fever, so and the viral myositis. Okay. and other connective tissue disorders to rule out the joint pain strain yeah. so what is as you told okay uh, viral uh, uh, polymyositis okay or a bacterial polymy apiomyositis uh, uh, they can have uh, severe joint uh, severe muscle pain and the weakness that is one thing and joint pain you ask overlap syndromes especially polymyositis and dermatomyositis will have uh, overlap syndromes with the rheumatoid arthritis sle jogras syndrome so thinking that you are cyst of joint pain why you are cyst of breathlessness and cough yes, uh, they will have association with the uh, interstitial lung diseases sir these uh, myositis ild bronchopneumonia they will have respiratory association yeah so they have respiratory association especially ild uh, not only ild on cardiac involvement can be there so that is why uh, the other issue which you have asked the next the palpitation huh? the giddiness breathlessness huh? so for mm-hmm. the nervous system involvement especially the respiratory and cardiac involvement that is why that is is important then you ask is there weight gain and weight loss why uh, to rule out whether it is endocrine related hypo or hyperthyroid uh, features uh, to rule out that i have asked yeah. and also mm-hmm. malignancy is also we can rule out from the weight loss history yeah so endocrinological diseases almost all the endocrinological diseases can produce proximal muscle weakness bilateral upper limb and lower limb proximal muscle weakness hypo hyperthyroidism hyper hyperparathyroidism hypoparathyroidism corn syndrome cushing syndrome so acromegaly huh? so almost all the endocrinological diseases can produce proximal muscle weakness bilateral upper limb and lower limb and also as you told history of weight loss huh? uh, can be a uh malignancy associated with inflammatory myositis especially dermatomyositis polymyositis huh? 
immune mediated necrotizing myopathy can be associated with the weight loss and malignancy. That is why that is the main point. Huh? Is there a headache? Why you ask? To rule out uh, any intracranial or uh, ICT features to rule out or some. No, here you are not thinking any brain uh, lesion no? producing this sort of weakness, bilateral upper and lower limb. So, probably a uh, systemic features will be associated with uh, this inflammatory myositis. So, feeling that you may be asking this here, huh? Yes, sir. Next slide. Yeah, so this is the you ask for a cranial involvement. Huh? Yes, sir. No loss of smile, blurring of vision, numbness over the face, difficulty in chewing, bullying of saliva, deviation of the angle of mouth. Okay. Next slide. So, hearing loss, bringing sensation in the ear, Aetner, you ask. They can, some of the inflammatory myositis, they can have dysphagia. Huh? And hoarseness yes, of voice can be the presenting features, especially dermatomyositis. Huh? Inclusion body myositis, they can have huh? yes. dysphagia and overstress of voice. Next, you ask hypo and hyperthyroid symptom. As we told, endocrinological disease can have a proximal mental weakness, proximal myopathy. So, thinking that you ask. Huh? And no history of exertional muscle cramps. Huh? Okay. Yes. Next slide. Yeah, before that, uh, you, you finish the history, everything, and then we localize anatomically where you want to localize. And then how do you approach a muscle weakness in the history, we'll discuss. Go ahead with the past history. Okay. Come to past history. There is not a known case of diabetes, hypertension, tuberculosis, epilepsy, or there is no history of drug intake. Why drug and intake? After is admission. Other drugs uh, introduce uh, the, the myopathies, uh, Bhuvaneshwari. Steroids, statins, and some of the antiretroviral drugs mm. and penicillamine drug. Mm. Oh. See, almost all the cholesterol drugs, so fibric acid, niacin, statins, can statins be proximal yeah. muscle weakness. Then corticosteroids, as you told, especially nine alpha fluorinated corticosteroids like triamphenolone, beta methasone, dexamethasone will produce proximal muscle weakness. Mm. Okay. Sir. Then addictive drugs like alcohol, heroin, mm, cocaine, amphetamine can yes. produce proximal weakness. Then non-depolarizing muscle relaxants. Then immune mediated statins, checkpoint inhibitors which you give in uh, as anti-cancer drugs. Okay. And then penicillin. Huh? They are immune mediated myopathies. They can produce. Then amphophilic drugs like hydroxychloroquine. Chloroquine, amiodarone, then microtubule inhibitors like colchicin can produce proximal muscle weakness. Huh? Okay, that is why the history is history of drug intake yes. is important. Huh? And uh, she had after admission to hospital on the on the day she had developed chest pain, sir. Mm. So it troponin came as positive and angiogram then and she diagnosed as myocarditis that time. Hmm. Angiogram was normal? Uh, angiogram is normal, sir. Only myocarditis? Huh? Yes, sir. Okay. And coming to family history, there is no history of similar complaints in the family members. Why in family is important in this case? Now you are thinking both upper limb and lower limb, proximal mental weakness. Huh? Yes, it is subacute. It is acute to subacute in onset. Right? In this case. Yes, uh, why family is important in this case? Some of the myopathies, uh, myotonic dystrophy and all, it will run in the families, like linger deal dystrophies or myotonic dystrophy. So to yeah. rule out the yeah. So the muscle dystrophy is, uh, for example, if in a childhood, uh, Duchenne and Becker's, in adult phageous capillary humor, limb girdle. Uh, Myotonic yes, dystrophy. So they run in families. Huh? Yes, sir. And the uh, mode of onset will be it is chronic in them. Huh? It won't okay, be sir. like here days to weeks or months. Huh? Like yes. in the inflammatory myopathy. Okay. The uh, onset will be acute. Huh? Okay. In, okay the, in weeks to months. Huh? Acute to subacute. Not like a very long history in a muscle dystrophy. Huh? 
and there will there will be a family history here there won't be any family history inflammatory myocarditis so that is a family history we will talk about so how about come to personal history she takes mixed diet normal appetite sleep is adequate and she is married had two children uh, yeah before going to general examination go back one slide before yeah now where you want to localize anatomically this a now let us come either from above downwards or below down or or, or below upwards huh? anyway we can go huh? yes, uh, can it be first we will uh, consider uh, from the mantel uh, the periphery uh, can it be a, a channelopathy like a periodic paralysis in this case what are the point taken as periodic paralysis in this case they also will have water uh, relapse yeah uh, so relapsing remitting so there are multiple attacks uh, you see multiple attacks will be there uh, uh, then uh, pain here the patient is saying pain uh, pain yes. is not a feature of periodic paralysis uh, and patient is having skin lesions uh, skin lesion associated with the motor weakness that is also not a feature of periodic paralysis so periodic paralysis is ruled out uh, next come to the muscle so muscle i will come to later okay that is okay. question of muscle how, what are the diseases how to approach a muscle weakness now yeah. let us come to neuromuscular junction can be neuromuscular junction disorder this case motor weakness mm -hmm. upper limb lower limb what are the point taken as neuromuscular junction disorder and is a diurnal variation sir yeah so they have a diurnal variation okay then any other difference mm -hmm. in this case relapsing and remitting type mm -hmm. uh, and exercise and activity it will worsen in a neuromuscular junction disorders any cranial involvement ptosis will be there they'll uh -huh. have uh, you know, cranial nerve involvements yeah cranial nerve involvement test in ptosis will be there uh, third nine ocular motor nerve involvement and as you told diurnal variation there so neuromuscular junction disorder unlikely can it be anterior root multiple anterior which is of course multiple anterior root which is Gillian Barre syndrome. Gillian Barre syndrome. Can be Gillian Barre syndrome. So some uh, uh, days to weeks, the weakness appeared. Now, what are the point taken as Gillian Barre syndrome in this case? It's a ascending paralysis, sir. Yeah, Gillian Barre syndrome is a ascending paralysis. Weakness will be first in the lower limb, and then it goes to the upper limb. But here, the weakness is first came in the upper limb, and then in the lower limb. Plus, there is a skin lesions. There is a skin lesion. and there is no precipitating factor in this case preceding this case of fever or a loose motion or a vaccination huh? yes, that is the is not there so it is unlikely huh? anti um, unlikely a uh, anterior root disorder can it be a anterior horn uh, problem anterior horn disease which is anterior horn disease you know motor okay. neuron disease motor uh, okay can it be motor neuron disease no sir onset here it is uh, uh, weeks only so here it is uh, days to uh, day, days to months here the onset what are the disease will be over the years is a degenerative disease it, it comes over the years and usually it won't be starting it won't be symmetrical it won't be symmetrical like that huh? usually it start with symmetrical and then it become symmetrical huh? the motor neuron disease and here the patient has a pain skin lesion so this is the point taken as the motor neuron disease can it be a spinal cord can it be a transverse myelitis at the level of uh, For example, say T five. I'll just find it. What are the point in spinal cord in this case? Any sensory involvement? Other is bowel and bladder involvement. There is no stiffness. So yeah. All... Yeah. So there is uh, no sensory level or a bowel and bladder is not involved. Huh? So unlikely either a non-compressive or a compressive myelopathy in this case. Huh? Spinal cord is unlikely the anatomical localization. So you ruled out from spinal cord till the channel opening, till the there on the what are the possibilities? So nothing is fitting. Is it fitting into muscle? What are the patient is giving the history? Can it fitting into a muscle disease? Yes, sir. Yeah. So probably fitting into a, a muscle disease. Okay, bilateral upper limb and lower limb proximal muscle weakness. No distinct muscle weakness. Okay. Suppose if it is a muscle disease. How do you approach a muscle disease? Anatomically, now you are localizing it as a muscle. Huh? How do you approach a muscle? Yes, a muscle disease is mainly intermittent weakness, persistent weakness. Suppose if one patient has an intermittent weakness, what are the diseases you will take? One is uh, myasthenia gravis. Yeah, 
Suppose if the yeah, patient okay. has an intermittent weakness along with the ocular involvement, like ptosis, bulbar involvement, huh? then proximal muscle weakness more than that is done. Then you will consider neuromuscular mm -hmm. tension disorder, myasthenia gravis. What are the other interm intermittent weakness diseases? And there is Lambert T10 syndrome, periodic paralysis. Hypokalemic periodic paralysis. paralysis. Huh? Okay, hypokalemic periodic paralysis, where they also won't have any cranial lobe involvement, only proximal and muscle involvement is there, both in upper limb and lower limb, but it will be periodic. But in this case, it is persistent. Our case is persistent. Suppose if it is periodic, what are the DDs you will consider in the muscle disease we are discussing? Okay, right. Right. Yes. Suppose uh, uh, if there is a myotonia with the periodic weakness, what are the diseases you will consider? Paramyotonia congenita. Yeah. Or, uh, paramyotonia congenita. Okay. My paramyotonia congenita, where they have a myotonia with intermittent weakness. And then hyperkalemic periodic paralysis also can have myotonia with intermittent weakness. Hyperkalemic periodic paralysis. Okay. Can also okay. have intermittent weakness. Then if there is a myoglobinuria with intermittent weakness, then there are some rare uh, the metabolic diseases like uh, glycolytic pathway disease. Huh? If uh, with forearm exercise, the lactic acid doesn't increase. And with forearm exercise, if the lactic acid increases, then you will consider the parental formatile transferase deficiency and some fatty acid my metabolism pathway diseases, uh, rare metabolic diseases, which they have intermittent weakness with the exercise. Huh? So it's okay. an intermittent weakness approach. Suppose okay, if it's a persistent weakness, how do you approach? Now, if it is a persistent weakness, suppose if there is a Bilateral upper limb and lower limb proximal weakness. What are the diseases you will consider if it is a persistent weakness? Bilateral upper limb and lower limb proximal weakness. What are the diseases you will consider? One thing is inflammatory myopathies. Oh, inflammatory myopathies, like in this case, where the patient will have pain along the proximal and the, uh, along the upper limb and lower limb proximal. And inflammatory myopathies. Which are the inflammatory myop myopathies, you know? Dermatomyositis, polymyositis, immune mediated necrotizing myopathy, inclusion body myositis, and uh, anti synthetase syndrome. Sir. Yeah, very good. Huh? So these are the inflammatory myopathies which you know. Apart from inflammatory myopathies, any other disease will have a persistent weakness, bilateral upper limb and lower limb weakness. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Endocrine causes we have to rule out. Very good. And uh, drug uh, intake. Very good. Alcoholic myopathies. Yeah, drugs, drugs and toxins. Okay, then. And uh, suppose the history is for long period, as I told, for the, over the years. It's Myotonia, family. congenita, muscular dystrophies. Ah, this, if a childhood, if there is a family history, is there, Dutch's dystrophy, huh? Becker's dystrophy. In adult, uh, you would consider limb girdle dystrophy. Huh? Limb girdle dystrophy. Huh? Okay. Suppose if in a persistent weakness, if phase is involved, scapula is involved, upper limb and lower limb, proximal weakness. What is you will consider? Facial scapular humeral dystrophy. Yeah. So we will consider facial scapular humeral dystrophy. If phase is involved, uh, scapula is involved, upper limb is involved. For example, if it is in a persistent weakness, if phase is involved, if the distal hand muscles are involved, what you will consider? Phase and distal hand muscles. Distal myopathies, we can consider. Uh, Their phase won't be involved. No? Phase, I'm giving clue. For example, if there is a baldness, cataract, and so Myotonic dystrophy, sir. Ah, myotonic myotonic dystrophy. dystrophy. Ah, facial involvement with the distal muscle weakness will consider myotonic dystrophy. For example, which are the myopathies which will involve the eyes? Ocula, oculopharyngeal myotonic dystrophy. Well, oculopharyngeal dystrophy, one then. Neuromuscular junction disorders. Yeah, neuromuscular yes. junction disorder, but there the weakness will be intermittent, it will be persistent, very good. And which are the other eye involvement myopathies? Mitochondrial myopathies. Mitochondrial myopathy is very good. The eye will be involved. Correct. Then thyroid, huh? the thyroid myopathy is also eye will be involved and tosis can be there. Huh? So in a persistent weakness, eye involvement also you will consider the picture. Hmm. For example, if there is uh, usually myopathies are proximal. Okay, yes, sir. and neuropathy is distal region in general. Yes, but there are some myopathies which can involve the distal muscle, for example, very rare, like emery pose disease. Huh? Okay, yes, uh, very okay, the myofibular myopathy, huh? very rare okay, distal myopathies are there. Okay, very rare. Huh? Right. 
Okay, sir. For example, in the persistent weakness, if the in the upper limb, the finger flexors are involved, lower limb quadriceps is involved. What this is will consider? Inclusion body minus surface. Very good. Huh? Inclusion body minus surface. So, let me typical picture. Okay, upper limb, the flexor of the uh, hand will be involved. Lower limb quadriceps muscle will be involved. Inclusion body minus. And last in the persistent weakness, he has one dropped head syndrome. Huh? The dropped head syndrome, there are three reasons, there are three causes he has given. One is amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, it's not a myopathy actually, it is involved in the corticospinal tract and the antioxidant. And myasthenia gravis, neuromuscular junction disorder, one polymyl. Yes, okay. drop head syndrome in the Harrison. So, students, uh, in the Harrison, there are two so fantastic flow diagrams. One is about the intermittent weakness, how do you approach it? What are the causes? Then a persistent muscle weakness, what are the causes? And how do you approach a persistent weakness? In this case, it's a persistent weakness. Anatomically, you are localized in the muscle. So in the muscle, there is a persistent weakness. Bilaterally symmetrical, upper limb and lower limb involved, along with the pain, along with the pain, and along with the classic skin lesion, in the lower eyelids, in the knuckles, in the ankle and in the knee joint. So, because pain and proximal muscle weakness, you want to consider inflammatory myopathy in this case. Which inflammatory myopathy you want to consider inflammatory myositis? Dermatomyositis, sir, in this yeah, case. Yeah, you want to consider dermatomyositis because of classic skin. Huh? Yes, sir. So, this is how you approach huh? a case. Yes. Huh? First, anatomically, you localize in the muscle disease, how do you approach a persistent weakness and uh, intermittent weakness, uh, like yes, this. Sir. Yeah, go ahead, example. Coming to general physical examination, patient is conscious, cooperative, and she is oriented to time, place, and person. Come to vitals, temperature of a breath, respiratory rate 18 per minute, pulse 98 per minute, regular, blood pressure 120 by 80 millimeters of mercury in right arm supine position. And there is no pallor, icterus, cyanosis, clubbing, or pedal edema. And you can observe malar rash on cheek present. And there is a gotten papules on the hand. And there is no heliotrope rash, no shawl sign, no mechanic hands, no subcutaneous calcification, no purpura, no skin thickening, no lymph nodes palpable. Where you get mechanic hands? Which inflammatory myopathy? Antisynthetic syndrome. Yeah, get, very good. Huh? And since it is antibody, we get a mechanical rash. No shawl sign and even V sign you have to mention. V sign in the anterior part of the neck. Okay. Shawl sign in the back of the body. Huh? Okay. Yes. Com right. Coming to higher mental functions, uh, she is a right-handed, conscious of cooperative and it's normal. Coming to cranial nerve examinations, all cranial nerve examinations are normal. Yeah, in this case, because your, your DD is uh, because of muscle disease, you are considered neuromuscular junction disease, especially third, fourth, sixth, you are examining uh, that cranial nerve. Yes, and also, they love dysphagia and hoarseness, so you have to look specifically for a gag reflex. Uh, uh, okay. Those two things you have to specifically look. And one of the uh, another uh, is facial scapulohumeral dystrophy. So, facial nerve you have to specifically look into. Facial nerve, yes, third, fourth, sixth cranial nerve, and the gag reflex, ninth and tenth cranial nerve. Okay. Yes, sir. In coming to motor system examination, bulk in the upper limb and lower limb is normal. There is no wasting. And tone, both upper and lower limbs on the right and left side, it is normal. So, normal tone and there is no wasting. Huh? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Right. And power... Uh, Right upper limb at shoulder joint, it is 4 by 5. At elbow, 4 by 5. This to 4 by 5 on the right side. And the left side, it is 3 by 5. At the shoulder, elbow, and the wrist level. And here, because it is a muscle case, you are specifically, they will ask at each joint, uh, what are the muscles uh, involved in, in producing the each movement, and what is the nerve supply. So you have to be thorough in that. Now I lost, and you have to tell. Shoulder yes, abduction is done by which muscles do an injury? So first 15 degrees is by the supraspinatus. Next is by the deltoid. Next, uh, after about 90, it is the uh, trapezius. Sir. Very good. Huh? Right. Shoulder abduction is done by? Pectoralis major and anterior fibers of the deltoid. 
no 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 shoulder adduction is petrol is major latissimus dorsi ha huh? ah. latissimus dorsi is shoulder adduction ha huh? good ha huh? shoulder flexion is done by shoulder flexion is by deltoid pec post anterior fibers of the deltoid and pectoral is major very good shoulder extension is done by posterior fibers of the deltoid and latissimus dorsi yeah very good very nice huh? okay nice huh? now i lost the nerve supply of the muscles you should be able to tell what is the nerve supply to the deltoid axillary nerve sir pectoralis major medial and lateral pectoral nerves sir yeah medial and lateral anterior thoracic nerve huh? what is the nerve supply to latissimus dorsi latissimus dorsi thoraco long thoracic yeah correct sir the thoraco dorsal nerve yeah thoraco dorsal nerve huh? or latissimus dorsi what is the nerve supply to rhomboidus rhomboidus Dorsal scapula. Dorsal scapula. Huh? For the rhomboid, this is dorsal scapula. Huh? What is the nerve supply to supraspinal and infraspinal? Suprascapular nerve, sir. Very good. Huh? Supraspinal nerve. Huh? Nice. Huh? Uh, okay. That all is over. Shoulder joint movements over. Hmm? Then elbow joint. Elbow flexion is done by which muscle? Biceps brachii and corco brachialis. Hmm. Nerve supply to biceps and brachialis. Muscular cutaneous nerves. Sir. Yeah, shoulder extension is done by shoulder extension, sir. Sorry, sorry, elbow extension. Ah, uh, triceps. Sir. Nerve supply. Radial nerve. Yeah, so elbow also you should do. Huh? Right. Because it's a muscle case. Huh? Uh, there yes, small muscle examination here. Distal muscle weakness is not there. Huh? Uh, yes, but still, small muscle examination. You may they may ask, and it should be thorough at a postgraduate level. Huh? Okay, uh, and here the hand grip is normal, both upper limb and lower limb. Yes, sir. I, normal. I, I, right, sir. Right, uh, yes, sir. Normal. Huh? Normal, sir. Normal. Huh? So you want me to ask the nerve supply of the small muscles of the hand? Yes, sir. Okay. What is the nerve supply to extensor pollicis longus? Extensor pollicis longus is by radial. Correct. Uh, radial. Now, huh? extensor pollicis brevis. That is also radial. Correct. That is also radial. Huh? Abductor pollicis brevis. Uh, Median now, sir. No, no, no. That is also radial now. Abductor pollicis longus. Huh? So sir. abductor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis. Huh? They make an anatomical stamp walk. Huh? So all those muscles are supplied by the radial. Huh? Yes, okay. Right. Whereas. Abductor pollicis brevis is supplied by median now. Median. Medium. Brevis is median. Median. Flexor huh? pollicis longus. Flexor pollicis anterior interosseous nerve of the median. Median now. Flexor pollicis longus. Huh? Adductor pollicis. Adduction is by ulnar now. The yeah. branch of the pollicis is by ulnar. Interosseous. Palmar and dorsal interosseous by interosseous does. Dorsal will do abduction. Dab. Uh, dab. Palm will. Palmar. Palmar interosseous adduction. Dorsal interosseous abduction. Dab and dab. Huh? Yes. Okay. Right. Huh? Flexor digitorum superficialis and profundus. No separate. Median now, sir. No, no. Flexor digitorum Flex. profundus. The first two. The oh, wow. first two is by the. Allah no. Median now. Median now. Huh? Okay. Huh? The third and fourth is by the ulna. Huh? The third okay, and fourth. Lumbricals, same thing. Huh? The first and second first lumbricals is by the median mm -hmm. nerve. Third and fourth is by the ulna. Huh? Okay, what is the action of lumbricals? At the extension at the interphalangeal joint and flexion at the metacarpophalangeal joint. Very good. Huh? Flexion at the metacarpophalangeal joint, extension at the interphalangeal joint. How to examine the, uh, the muscle, uh, the small muscles of the hand is very important. Important how to examine each muscle. Okay. okay. Right. Uh, I have uh, in the video I have demonstrated the same case. Okay. Uh, in a in a prep clinic uh, app. Okay. Uh, okay and uh, clinical methods uh, by Dr. Giriraj is there. You can subscribe it. The same case I show how to examine clinically with the video. How to examine the power at each joint. The same case I have discussed here. That he uploaded in prep clinic app. Okay? 
so you can okay. upgrade that and you can download and you can see the same case okay so you should know very important for a post graduate level you should know small model examination how to exit huh? okay. opponent's policy is supplied by median now sir yeah good median huh? come to the lower limb coming to lower limb on the right side right at the hip it is 4 by 5 knee 4 by 5 ankle uh, dorsiflexion is 4 by 5 plantar flexion 4 by 5 On the left side, at the hip level, it is three by five. Knee four by five. Ankle three by five. So, hip flexion is done by which muscle? Soleus major and iliacus. Yeah. Now supply. Now supply. Now to soleus. Up. Oh. And for iliacus, several now. Okay, sir. Okay. Hip extension okay. is by. Gluteus maximus and hamstrings. No, no, no. Only gluteus maximus. What is the nerve supply for gluteus maximus? Yeah. Inferior gluteal nerve. Yeah. Inferior gluteal nerve. Yes, huh? Okay. Hip hip flexion and extension. Hip abduction is done by medius and minimus. Good. Nerve supply. Hello. Good. एक्सटेन The extension is by quadriceps of femoral. Now supply. Quadriceps. Femoral. Extension femoral now. Okay. Knee flexion is done by. Yes. Ah, uh, biceps femoris, uh, semi tendinosus, hmm. semi membranosus. Hamstring. Ah, uh, hamstring muscle. Now supply. TBL now. Femoral. TBL now. Ah, uh, TBL is us. Posterior. Dorsal flexion is done by is. Done by ankle dorsiflexion is done by and dorsiflexion is the tibialis anterior. Now supply and extends and tibial is a deep peroneal. Hmm? Deep peroneal. Plantar flexion is done by uh, gastrocnemius soleus. Uh, Now supply pero plantaris. Now supply peroneal. उटिंग Okay. Upper limb you are thorough, but lower limb little. Right? You can revise it, no problem. Huh? So here okay. there is both upper limb and lower limb. There is a weakness. Okay. Huh? Predominantly proximal. Yes, sir. Okay, good. Next. Yes, sir. Yeah. Next. Coming to coordination, it is normal, hmm. and there are no cerebellar signs. Yeah. And reflexes, superficial reflexes. Uh, it's not conjunctival and corneal normal. Mm -hmm. Abdominal reflex ill stable. Plantars are bilateral plantars mute sir. Mm -hmm. And deep tendon reflexes. Upper limb uh, on the right and left side. The uh, biceps, triceps, and supinator reduced sir. But it is possible. And lower limb. Uh, you should yes, say one plus. That is better. One plus. Huh? Yes sir. Yes. Mm -hmm. And lower limb knee it is plus two, ankle plus one, sir, on both sides. Mm, so reflex sir present, huh? Yes, sir. One of the DD you consider as a anterior root gluteal barrier syndrome, huh? Yes, sir. Reflex sir present, huh? Lively reflexes rules out. GBS, sir. GBS, anterior huh? Root. Okay. Yeah. Next. And there is uh, no involuntary movements, mm. and sensory system examination is normal. Mm. Spine and cranial examination is normal. Mm. In the gait is normal, sir. Yeah, in the muscle disease, 
the gait will give a clue for some of the diseases. Some of the movements while examining the patient, no, they give clue to some of the muscle involvement. For example, if the patient is uh, supine position, yes, if he cannot flex the neck means, then the neck flexors will be weak. Okay. Yes, sir. If patient is in a prone position, if he cannot extend the neck means, neck extensors will be weak. If he cannot close the eyes means, yes. facial muscles will be weak. Right. Huh? Yes, if there is a, if he cannot get up from a sitting position, okay. Huh? If he uses his own body, is is known as a weak sign in a muscle dystrophy. He climbs on his own body. If he uses, he climbs on his own buckling body. Gate. What is the sign? Buckling gait. No, 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 no. That is Gower sign. Huh? Gower sign. We oh. use his own body to stand. Uh, stand uh. Okay. Yes. Knee buckling is he cannot walk without hyperextending the knee joint. Uh. Knee buckling. Okay. That is quarters of sequence that indicates. Okay. Okay. Sir. Knee buckling indicates quarters of sequence. If there is a waggling gait, what that indicates? Quadril hips fingers. Hmm? Hip girdle muscles. Uh, hip. Uh. Okay. The proximal muscles of the hip joint. Uh. Okay, then they will have a wagging gait. If he cannot walk with the heel, only with the heel he has to walk, then which muscle will be a problem? Dorsiflex. Uh, Dorsiflexion. Uh, Dorsiflexors. Uh, uh, yes, sir. If he cannot walk with the toes, yes, only sir. with the toes he has to walk. Which muscles will be weak? Plantar flexor. Yeah. Plantar so, flexor. Gastronomous soleus huh? will be weak. So some of the things will give a clue. So some muscles are involved huh? in this important in, in muscle disease. Huh? So Harrison on table is there that you can go through. Okay. Huh? Okay, sir. Okay, next. Coming to other system examination, hmm. respiratory system, bilateral uh, normal vascular breath sounds, no added sounds. Hmm. In cardiovascular system, S1, S2 heard, no added sounds. Hmm. Pyroabdomen, soft, no organomegaly. Okay. Diagnosis. So, uh, right, before going to diagnosis, uh, now what are the disease you consider DDs at the end of the history? Huh? Uh, what are the positive yes, findings you got in the examination in anybody? Yes, sir. There is a decreased power, power sir, hmm. on both the right and left, hmm. and there is a diminished reflexes. Hmm. It was a percent. Huh? You told me, I think it's percent. Huh? Uh, your upper limb is present one class. Uh, reflex are present. Uh, hmm. Only thing is there is bilateral upper limb and lower limb. Proximal muscle weakness. Uh, any sensory involvement? No. No, sir. Plantar? Plantars are mute, sir, in this Plantars case. Plantars are mute. It is not extensor. Uh, okay. And cerebellum is normal. And no cranial involvement. Okay? Yeah. Right. Now, and the end of history is so many DDs you consider from periphery to center. Let us come again. I will tell the disease. Okay. You tell which how yes, the history only whether you could eliminate, and after examination, also you could eliminate uh, these diseases. Uh, okay. Yes, I'll come from periphery to center now. Uh, okay. Can it be a yes, channelopathy? No, sir. Uh, history, what are the point diagnosis? Examination, what are the point diagnosis? Channelopathy is uh... One is a relapsing remitting type. Yeah, there are multiple attacks. Okay. Uh, uh. Multiple attacks, relapsing yeah. remitting type. That is history wise. So history only you, you ruled out. Examination, uh, uh, will the findings be the same what you got in this patient in channelopathy? What will happen to the reflexes in channelopathy? It will be sluggish yeah. to absent. Okay, in channelopathy, they are also will have a motor weakness, proximal muscle weakness. But it still only rules out here in this case, channelopathy. Huh? Okay, can it be neuromuscular tension yes, disorder? Sir. No, sir. No, why? From the history also, we can rule out. And here, cranial love involvement here in neuromuscular junction disorder. Okay, any on examination, any, any point against neuromuscular junction? What will happen? Uh, reflexes, reflexes will be preserved. Preserved. Preserved, sir. Reflexes will be preserved. Here also it is preserved, no? Hmm? Here also it is preserved. But it's only you can root out the neuromuscular junction disorder. It's the only you can root out. Huh? Okay. 
Can it be Gillian Barra syndrome? Root? Anterior root? No, sir. Why? No, sir. A reflexia will be there. Ah, universal A reflexia will be there. Huh? That rules out Gillian Barra syndrome. Can it be an anterior horn uh, problem? Like uh, MND? Mm. What will happen to MND reflex? Sir? No, sir. There is no. Uh, first. In a E monitor, we lateral see what will happen to the reflexes, what will happen to plant? Plant reflexes will be normal. No, no, no. It is a E monitor with lateral cirrhosis, both mm -hmm. human and element science will be there. Huh? So they'll have a brisk reflexes with the fasciculation Fasciculation. and wasting is the element feature. Brisk reflex is a human feature, and plant will be extensive. So both element and human feature will be there in the motor neurons. Cortical swelling tract will be exactly. involved, so you get a brisk reflexes. Huh? INTA also will be involved, so you get a fetch. Mm -hmm. But here it is, you are not getting plant rings if you mute here. Huh? Okay. Yes, and reflexes are normal, yes. it is not exaggerated here. So, what are your disease is ruled out. Can it be a spinal cord transmyelitis at the level of C7 or C6? Uh, what are the, the point? No definite sensory level here and bowel okay. and bladder also not involved. Right. So bowel and bladder is not involved, no definite sensory level. So you rule out at all anatomical points for an area. So most of it is fitting into a muscle disease. Okay. Persistent weakness, as we discussed, both upper limb and lower limb, proximal. So what are the diseases you considered? Like that, persistent weakness, proximal. Upper and lower limb, which other diseases you consider? You consider the endocrinological diseases, you consider toxins and drugs, then you consider inflammatory myopathies okay. and muscle dystrophies. Can it be muscle dystrophy? This case, limb girdle okay. can be limb girdle. Yeah, what what is the point of the limb girdle dystrophy? There, limb cutting. Huh? They'll have proximal and uh, distal involvement. No, 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 no. The limb girdle is always proximal only. What are the point taken as limb girdle? Proximal muscles will be huh? proximal more than distal. You have to proximal more than distal, no? Limbs can What is the point taken as limb girdle? It is a muscle dystrophy, as I told, mode of onset. How do you live in there? Mode of How? Chronic, chronic will be. Chronic also. over the years, huh? And one more is yes, sir. family history. Yes, sir. Okay, huh? Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. Limb girdle is of family is and over the years it will come. Right? Not like yes, you. Right? Yes, so, limb girdle is of unlike you. So, because of the, in, uh, the uh, weakness occurred from days to months, you consider it is uh, acute to subacute onset with the pain, muscle pain, and with the skin drag. So, you want to consider the inflammatory myopathy. Okay? Which okay, inflammatory sir. myopathy? Because classic uh, Gautran papules, Gautran patches is there. You want to consider dermato? Yes, it is. Yes. So, a very simple case if you know the anatomy, logical way of approaching eh? a muscle disease, point for ignorance at each level. CNS is very simple. Either you come from periphery to center or go from center to periphery. That is what we join. Okay. You come from cortex to muscle or go from muscle to cortex. That's all. At each level, some disease will affect. Then, depending upon the history, mode of onset, and on your examination, you can come to come. diagnosis in almost all the cases. Okay? This is the case of inflammatory okay, sir. myopathy, dermatomyopathy. Dermat huh? How do you approach the this? Cardiac case? involvement. Yeah. With cardiac involvement. With cardiac involvement, myocarditis. Huh? Oh, yes, sir. They are diagnosed by echo there huh? in Manipal. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Right. Go ahead. How you how you proceeded? Okay. Yes, you sir. Uh, I want to mention some investigations you had done. Here in this patient, it shows mm. uh, antibody to MA2 positive. Mm. And CPK is 11,930. Mm. And troponin came as positive. CKMB mm. more than 80. SGOT 268. SGPT 550. Mm. And LDH uh, 1187, sir. Which are the antibodies you send in dermatomyositis? Uh, MDA, oh, oh. MDA5. What is, what is MDA? Which is melanoma differentiating antigen 2. Very good. Then which are other antibodies you send? And is uh, TIF1, sir. Transcriptional, TIF intermedi transcriptional intermediary factor. 
before the patient develops weakness, that too with a, a family history, and most probably the patient is having mother history. Then some peculiar skin lesions will give a clue to some inflammatory myelitis. For example, if the patient has classic heliotrope rash, water and papules, and rashes, along with telangiectasia, it gives a clue that it is dermatoma. Suppose if the patient has involvement of the flexors in the hand or quadriceps in the lower limb, that gives you the clue it is inclusion by the mind. Yes. Suppose if the clinical features doesn't give a clue to a diagnosis, then you have to go to a laboratory. EPK is the hallmark enzyme of all the myopathies. It will be elevated in all the myopathies in general. But there are sometimes EPK may be normal in some of the myopathies, but if EPK is elevated more than 2000, it is 100% due to the myopathy. In the inflammatory, in the inclusion body myopathies, EPK won't be elevated. It will be usually less than 10 times the normal. Then myositis specific antibodies, as in this case like MIP or MDA5, melanocyte differentiating antigen. Transcription intermediate factor. So, if these antibodies are positive, that indicates it is dermatomyositis. Then you do EMG and nerve conduction study. EMG and nerve conduction study will localize a problem that doesn't tell which type of myopathy. Then you can do imaging of the muscle like MRI, which will indicate atrophy, hypertrophy, fat deposition, or the edema in the muscle, which will indicate the MRI. Nerve biopsy is the investigation of choice for a confirmatory diagnosis. Nerve biopsy will be done only if CPK is elevated or if the patient has an objective weakness or EMG is showing objective weakness. Then only nerve biopsy will be done. If a classic myositis specific antibodies are present in the dermatomyositis clinically, if you suspect, no need of doing biopsy. Whereas, in all the case of polymyositis, biopsy is indicated to rule out inclusion body myositis. And biopsy is a feature of immune mediated necrotizing myopathy because by that only that entity is defined. So, biopsy is a must do. Any patient who has a severe body pain, subjective weakness, but if there is no objective weakness, unlikely is having a myopathy. Polymyalgia rheumatica closely mimics myopathy will have high CRP and ESR. And fibromyalgia or the laboratory investigation will be normal. This is a brief introduction about inflammatory myopathy. Now coming to each entity of the inflammatory myopathy. First we will discuss dermatomyopathy. Sir, uh, uh, and out, sir. If yeah. antibodies if antibodies come positive, we have to do MRA, sir. No, 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 MRI is not very specific. No need MRI. Not required. It just shows edema, atrophy, hypertrophy, that's it. Huh? EMG, sir. EMG. EMG is also non specific. It doesn't give a which type of myopathy. Huh? Okay. It'll just say problem is there in that muscle. That is that's it. Huh? It okay. won't say what myopathy. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So coming to dermatomyositis. Dermatomyositis, usually the weakness will be the proximal more than the distal. And as the name indicates, they will have the skin manifestation, a heliotropic rash in the lower eyelid. Gotten rashes in the knuckle, ankle joint, and knee joint. Gotten papules, the elevated erythematous rash elevation is the papule. They will have subcutaneous calcification and subungual telangiectasia. Some patients they may come with dysphagia. Or sense of voice damage. The skin manifestation is very critical in dermatomyositis. Some patients may have only muscle disease without skin manifestation. EMO that is known as uh, the skin manifestation without muscle disease. Or some they have only muscle disease without skin manifestation. Amyopathic dermatomyositis where no muscle, only skin manifestation. Amyopathic variety. 
the skin manifestation in dermatomyositis as i told it was morbidity to the patient intractable pruritus unlike the other diseases like cutaneous sle contact dermatitis psoriasis here it produces morbidity with the intractable pruritus then they allow associated lung problems so they may have breathlessness due to intercostal muscle involvement bronchopneumonia or alveolitis and if lung involvement is there that will be associated with anticipated antibody they have cardiac involvement and usually 10 to 15% will be associated with the malignant especially in the initial two to three Of coming to the investigation. Investigation, seventy to eighty percent CPK will be elevated, and in some other ten percent where CPK is not elevated, serum alveolase will be elevated. And myositis specific antibodies, as Bohr has already told, melanoma differentiating antigen five, transcription intermediate five, one. Nuclear matrix protein two. Here, some antibodies have some specific clinical features. For example, if it is a melanoma differentiating antigen, I usually use a myopathic dermatomyositis. So, only skin manifestation, rash, digital necrosis, those kind of things. If it is a MI two, it is very benign. And if it is nuclear transcript protein two or transcription intermediate five. One, they will be associated with the malignant. Then we can do EMG. We have a non-specific finding and other conditions. MRI will show edema. That also will have non-specific finding. And histopathology you have to do in dermatomyositis. Histopathology will show in fifty percent of the patients peripheral atrophy. They will have mixovirus. Resistant protein stain on skin, very highly sensitive on spectrum. They have inflammatory cells, macrophages, dendritic cells, plasma cell around MHC one. Express muscle fiber. These inflammatory cells will go on attacked. And in the skin manifestations, they will have cell poor interface dermatitis, where. The cell will, if at all, if it is there, will be between epidermis and dermis, and keratocytes, keratinocytes will undergo degeneration, similar to perivascular atrophy. These are the histological features of dermatomyositis. Usually, the histological features are that perivascular, endomyceal, perimyceal inflammation. Is mediated by intercurrent beta. Dermatomyositis responds to steroids. There are some food prognostic factors: increased age, associated with other cardiac or lung involvement, or delay in the start of treatment, or inadequate treatment indicates very bad progress in dermatomyositis. Next is polymyositis. Polymyositis also the weakness will be acute to subacute in the next two months. Proximal is more than distal. It will also be associated with the like dermatomyositis, either the lung condition or the cardiac condition. And here also they are predisposed to malignancies like dermatomyositis. The investigation, laboratory investigations here, the CK will be CPK will be elevated. The EMG and other conditions study will show non-specific findings. MRI in a polymyositis, the rectal femoris will be involved specifically, unlike the inclusion body myositis, where vastus medialis and lateralis will be involved in inclusion. Here, rectal femoris in polymyositis. The histopathology will show again the inflammatory cells in the MHC one express sarcolemal cells. And very non-specific histopathology findings you get in polymyositis. 
treatment, they respond to steroids, but not that much like darbutamide. As I told you, they are also associated with malignancies, polymyositis, and the prognosis is similar to dermatomyositis in the where increased age, delay in starting of the treatment, or inadequate treatment, are associated with lung or heart conditions, will have a bad prognosis. Usually, polymyositis and dermatomyositis will be associated with the overlap symptoms with a connective tissue disease or mixed connective tissue disease, scleroderma, SLE, rheumatoid arthritis, and Jogren syndrome. And the prognosis is similar in terms of overlap or with overlap. The treatment, the response is similar. It is about polymyositis. Next year, immune mediated necrotizing myeloma. Here, there will be two autoantibodies HMG CoA reductase anti antibody to HMG CoA reductase inhibitor antibody and signal. Reduction cortical antibody, anti-SRP. These cases will be associated with the statin exposure, or they may be associated with the current tissue disease like mixed current tissue disease and scleroderma, or idiopathy, or with malignancy. Sometimes in children, there may not be history of any statin intake. The immune mediated necrotic myopathy may be mimic as a limb girdle disease. A toxin in this myopathy, if you stop the statins, it will resolve. Whereas, an uh, immune mediated necrotizing myopathy due to the statin, even if you stop the statins, this will progress. That is the difference between a toxin in this myopathy from an immune mediated necrotizing myopathy. So, if you do that lab investigation, CPK will be elevated. And these two antibodies which I told, anti-HMG CoA reductase inhibitor and anti-signal reduction cortical will be there. Histopathology, it may be polymyositis where predominant perimyceal inflammation will be there. Membrane attack complex, plasma cells, dendritic cells will go on and attack the MHC1 short molecular cell. And treatment, immune mediated necrotizing myopathy. Difficult to respond with the steroid. The usual response to IV immunoglobulins. And immune mediated necrotizing myopathy like polymyositis and dermatomyositis will be associated with malignancy. Some of the patients, when they don't respond to immune suppressants, you may confuse them with the limb girdle dystrophy, immune mediated necrotizing myopathy. Next is anti-synthetase syndrome. Anti-synthetase syndrome will have mechanics and Reynolds phenomena, non-erosive arthritis, myositis, fever. They'll have amino acid tRNA synthetase antibody. 20 to 30 percent will have amino acid tRNA synthetase antibody. The most of common is jo anti jo antibody. Anti-synthetase antibody, unlike the polymyositis, dermatomyositis, immune mediated necrotizing myopathy, it is not associated with malignancy. They will have a lung disease, CT will show a honeycombing appearance, and pulmonary function test will show reduced FTV1, and PFT will show reduced diffusing capacity in the lung. And if they have lung manifestation, they poorly respond to immunosuppression. Come to the investigations, the CPK will be elevated. EMG and nerve conditionality, not specific findings. Histopathology will show arthritis, phosphate stain. And histopathology resembles dermatomyositis. In <coughs> dermatomyositis, there will be perifascular atrophy, whereas here there will be a perifascular necrosis. In antigen, that is antibody syndrome. Treatment is immunosuppressants like any other polymyositis or immunosuppressants. Next, inclusion body myositis is very peculiar from the other inflammatory diseases because it occurs in older ages, over 50 years, 
males are affected slowly progressive and is asymmetrical unlike the other insemitic upper limb the finger flexors will be involved lower limb quadriceps will be and they poorly respond to immunosuppressors right? like unlike other inflammatory myopathies is they respond but inflammatory but inclusion body myopathy is poorly response to immunosuppressors and once you diagnose that by 10 to 15 years they will become wheelchair bound this inclusion body myopathy can have dysphagia as a presenting symptom the laboratory features will show they lack decrease ratio of cd4 to cd8 cells and close cytometry large granular lymphocytes will be increased and cpk won't be elevated here only it is less than 10 times the potential is elevated in inclusion body myopathy Della cytosolic nucleotidase phi antibody one third to two third of the patients will have this. And histopathology in inclusion body myopathy. Della varimbudo vacuoles. Cytochrome oxidase negative staining. Then della inclusion. in electron and light microscopy like amyloid but doesn't stain with congoid like classic amyloid in endoplasmic reticulum autophagy and stress it is indicated by p62 and lc3 staining will be there same like this endoplasmic reticulum autophagy and stress is also seen in primary biliary cirrhosis antologic spondylitis inflammatory bowel disease they also won't respond to immunosuppressant like inclusion body myopathy and the treatment as i told they won't respond to immunosuppressants so there no specific only physiotherapy for the inclusion body myopathy and they will become wheelchair bound by 10 to 15 so the treatment of all these inflammatory myopathies steroids corticosteroids are the first line of treatment for all the inflammatory myopathies you will start a second line only if there is a involvement of the other systems like lung and cardiac involvement or any complications of the corticosteroids or very severe diseases or immune mediated necrotic myopathy or difficult myopathy patients you will start a second line or else corticosteroids is the first line of And if patient is on monotherapy with the corticosteroids, you may consider second line. Whenever they develop adverse reaction to the corticosteroids, or you are unable to taper the corticosteroid dose, then you will have second. Inclusion body myopathy doesn't respond to corticosteroids, and immune mediated necrotic myopathy doesn't respond to corticosteroids. You will there require second line. Along with that, IV immunoglobulins and D2C. Corticosteroids you start with the dose of 0.75 mg to 1.5 mg per day, maximum 100 mg. Usual dose is 68. So you give for two to four months, then you taper 5 mg every two to four months till it becomes 20 mg, and after that you will taper 2.5 mg every two to four months till it becomes 10 mg. The main thing. If patient has a very severe disease, initially you may give IV lethal potency one or two or three days, and then you switch over the oral corticosteroid. You monitor the CPK and B while patient is on steroid. To change the steroid dosage, you consider only the objective clinical evidence, not the CPK and B or the EMG. While on steroid, patient may worsen. Whether they worsen due to steroid over dosage or due to the problem of the original pathological myo, the inflammatory myopathy, it's a confusion. Also. If patient develops a weakness when patient is in a high dose of steroids, CPK and B is not elevated. EMG doesn't show any abnormality, and patient has a pushing syndrome. Then the weakness is due to corticosteroid induced myopathy. If the patient develops weakness while you are tapering the steroids, CPK may be elevated. 
EMG shows abnormal it is, then the weakness is due to the myopathy. The second line of drugs the, is methotrexate in the second line. You can use 7.5 mg per week, increase to 25 mg per week for one month. If no response, then you can do parental subcutaneous methotrexate, 30 mg per week. There are adverse effects like stomach ache, interstitial lung disease, renal, hepatic problem. Keratogenicity, oncogenesis. So it has its own adversity. Azathioprine, 50 milligram you start, then you increase every two to four weeks, 50 milligram, till the dose is around two to three milligram per kg per week. 12% of the patients develop systemic reactions like fever, abdominal pain, headache, where you have to stop that drug. Azathioprine takes 6 to 18 months for the action to develop. Those who have PPMT deficiency, thiopurine methyl transfer deficiency, you should not give azathioprine because that produces severe bone marrow toxicity. Mycophenol morphic gel, you can give 1 gram, you can increase till 3 grams per day. So, this added advantage of mycophenol morphic gel is renal and liver toxicity is less. It is excreted through the renal. Excretion. So, whenever there is a renal problem, you have to reduce the dose of mycotonal morphite. If the patient has a lung problem, mycotonal morphite is the next second line of drug of choice because methotrexate you can't give there. IV immunoglobulins, 2 grams per kg body weight you can give for 5 days. Then you can give either you can increase the, do uh, increase the duration or decrease the dosage. You can give 2 grams per kg body weight every 2 months or 1 gram per kg body weight every month. Either you can do that after they attain the response. I immunoglobulins are a treatment for immune mediated necrotizing myopathy. Then you are rituximab. You can give 1 gram parenterally IV. Then after 2 weeks, 1 more dose you can give. Then after 6 to 18 months, you can repeat the dosage of the reduction. So the second line drugs are methotrexate, azathioprine, mycotonal morphital, rituximab, IV immunoglobulin. Then coming to the epidemiology. Usually uh, in Japan, inclusion body myositis is associated with hepatitis in 28% of the patients. And HIV will produce polymyositis and inclusion body myositis. In a developing country like India, still the commonest cause of myositis is infection, pyomyositis or parasitic infection. Dermatomyositis, polymyositis and immune-mediated necrotism will be associated with carcinoma. Especially out of stars for an asopharyngeal costume. So I told all this part of an inflammatory myopathy, but as a postgraduate student, whenever a muscle weakness, muscle disease case is given, you are expected to approach it anatomical localization, how you are localizing it. What are your DDs, points for and against? And in the muscle disease, how do you approach a muscle disease? Persistent weakness, intermittent weakness, and why are considered that is the same case. This case which I am which I discussed today, the inflammatory myopathy in a prep clinic with the patient. I have taken a video and I, it has been uploaded. You can download prep clinic app. Clinical methods by Giriraj is there. You can subscribe and you can see that. And all the cases I discussed there, I'll discuss here also. So it will be useful for you. Okay, sir. So go back, read the Harrison flow diagrams of the, in the muscle dystrophy chapter, the two flow diagrams and the table, and you should be able to approach a muscle disease. So any doubt, Bhuvaneshwari, and any doubts, Balaji, from the students? No, sir. No doubts. Nice. Nice, sir. Yeah, unless Balaji is unmuted, I think.
is muted no yes sir what to do i will learn yeah you call him call him he is muted Winning, sir. Yeah, Balaji, you you got muted. Why? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm just saying. What? Yeah. I don't know. There are no doubts in the chat as well as on uh, YouTube, sir. No doubts, sir. Huh? No doubt. When whenever I take, nobody will ask doubt why they are not understanding or what is the problem, Balaji. I think I think it's very clear, sir. Like the approach. Yes, ah. oh, sir. Like everything like is made very simple for us, sir. So we don't get doubt. So we go back and read, and it becomes more easy for us. Okay. 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 That's nice. Huh? Okay. I'll come again with a one more interesting case whenever time permits. Huh? Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank we you, thank uh, we thank Dr. Giriraj sir for his valuable time and making it making uh, muscle disorders and uh, approaching the muscle disease a very comprehensively and in an easy manner. We also thank uh, Dr. Bhuneshwari for presenting this interesting case so that we all got to learn from your uh, valuable and uh, well prepared presentation. We also thank all the participants. Thank you, thank you sir. Okay thank you thank you, thank you sir good night